Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Here we're going to be continuing where we left off in the last video talking about the simple engines and now we're talking about the modular engines so follow along. Now in front of us is the Buckle Stampede which is the largest consumer version of the pickup truck that Buckle has to offer and in the engine bay is a modular 12 cylinder engine. So you can kind of see it fills out the space pretty well. But if you walk over here to the engine stand, here is the same engine except it's been removed from the truck and it's just the engine and the radiator. So that's how this engine looks except it's in there currently. Now let's take this to the workshop and explore. Here's the same engine in the workbench and if we take a closer look, you'll see what it consists of are the manifolds up here for the cylinders, then you, the actual cylinders themselves. In the middle of all that, you have your crankshaft, which is this guy, leading to a, a clutch. There's more manifolds in the bottom, a couple cylinders there. You got the accessory belt on the front, which is for the starter and all that stuff. And this engine is actually supercharged, so here we have our supercharger pump and air filter. Now we're going to teach you how to build your own one of these, so follow along. Now hopefully you're coming from the previous video if you're not very familiar with modular engines because the basic starting point, like I explained in the last video talking about simple engines, is this. Now if you take a look at this, just so, I, just so we're clear, you have your coolant in, your coolant out, exhaust, fuel, air, and RPS. So the modular engine will have all of those things identical. The only difference is that when you actually get to making it work with an ECU, you have to take a little bit more time to properly tune it. Whereas here you just have a throttle, starter, and these outputs. But that's okay, don't have to worry about that right now. Let's just begin with our simple layout of an engine. So what I always do, make sure to type modular, and here's all the nice engine parts right in front of you. Now, in this video, we're just going to be going through the one by ones, but there are larger crankshafts, larger drive belts, larger cylinders. But anyway, let's get started with the modular engine. So, if you're familiar with the car, you have a crankshaft, and that's pretty much what gives the cylinders, or what, what creates power from the cylinders. The way an engine works is as the cylinders move up and down because of the combustion cycle, your crankshaft, crankshaft will actually spin and that's what gets your car going. So let's make a six cylinder engine, okay? Okay, so all this consists of right now is our crankshafts which it says here, attach cylinders to the outer surface to generate power, multiple crankshafts can be placed adjacent to each other to form larger engines. Okay, so we have this, and then if we hover over this guy, this is our cylinder. So it's a modular cylinder, attach a crankshaft to the outer surface to produce power, it requires a manifold, air, fuel, exhaust, and they could be chained directly adjacent to each other to share a single manifold. So that is important, guys. Keep in mind, these cylinders on this side are considered their own bank right now, even though they're producing power through this middle crankshaft. And then these ones here are their own bank, for lack of a better term. Now what that means is if you were to leave it like this without attaching anything, you would actually need to put, say, your exhaust on both sides, your fuel intake on both sides. So you, you don't share things between the two banks, but we're gonna show you how to do that, how to get around that. Anyway, so these, these are the starting points. You have this stuff, which is just six cylinders and three crankshaft blocks, okay? Now, like we had in the front of the other engine, like you find in the front of any car, you have your accessory belt. So we're gonna go ahead and find that accessory belt which is right here, modular engine drive belt, okay? 
that goes right on the front of this. And that means that it's actually spun by your crankshaft. Now see how the, there's different connectors here than are here and here. So there's three different types that we see right now. Four actually, on, on the back of this you have your actual crankshaft, but there's three that we see in this view. So these kind of narrow rectangular ones can fit things like this. If you spin this one around, you'll see that it looks like that. Okay, so this is our engine starter. We're gonna want one of those. We'll just attach it like that. So see that how the belt kind of shows it's wrapping itself around the crankshaft or the accessory drive. So if you click that and it disappears, but that's okay, it worked. Here you have your fluid pump and that's gonna be very important for your coolant. So keep that in mind. Now there are better and worse ways of optimizing all this. I'm not gonna worry about getting the best shape of engine right now, but you could see here, you actually have fluid in and fluid out. So now it kind of blocks anything you wanna put here. You'd need to have your fluid out. So what I tend to do is actually put this one on the bottom or on the side. Sorry, side doesn't work, bottom works bottom works best because on the bottom you can just avoid having to go around your cylinders and we'll explain that in a bit so I'm actually gonna keep that down there for the sake of this tutorial to show you and we could honestly remove this and just work with our pure engine okay so we have our starter we have the fluid pump now we need the alternator now we don't need an alternator and you even don't need a starter and you don't even need this. So depending on the kind of engine you have, you can optimize it or build it as you need a uh, starter. You can get away with a hand crankshaft. This one, if it's placed on the back, you can actually start the car manually with this, but we're going to go and explain how to use the starter, the alternator and clutch and uh, fluid pump. Sorry. So the, the alternator, is like I mentioned in the other video, a generator. So there is no practical difference in the game to this and this. Obviously the statistics, meaning the number of electricity, the, the number that of electricity it generates is different and all that stuff, but they operate identically in a sense that when you put RPS through this one here, it creates yourself uh, electricity. And when you put this on the drive belt, or the accessory belt, it'll create electricity. So they work identically. This guy here pumps is a pump. So you could also use a regular pump instead of this one. And we'll explain that in a bit. But the, but it, the reason is that this just, and you could actually use this guy to as a supercharger too. It doesn't have to be just here. Um, but we're going to use it for coolant. Okay. So here we've had, we have our three accessories on the front now, our six cylinder engine, and our crankshaft. All right. So back to modular things. All right. Now remember how I said that we have our two different banks at play right now. So we would in essence need to connect our fuel via the fuel manifold to both of these, for example, and you'd have, you know, you could have one fuel tank, but you'd have to have two of these because now these two sides are not sharing fuel, they're not sharing exhaust, they're not sharing air, they're not sharing anything. They're only sharing the crankshaft, which is generating the power. But there is a way to attach it and to make it work. And that is through this engine manifold. So when you attach this to either side of the banks, so like right here and here, and then you could put this one, either a straight one right here, or in the case of a compact design, for example, say you're having a smaller engine with not a lot of these uh, places for connection connections, you could actually do that and have your exhaust, for example, see the same type of connection come out here. So that's the T-shaped one, but we're going to go ahead and put a single straight one and we have our V6 engine just like this. 
and I'm saying V6, it's a six cylinder engine, it's not exactly a V shape, but it with, I mean, either we, we could mount it transverse like this and have it like that, it's not even really a V in that case, it's like a, but anyway, for this game, this is a V6, in my opinion. All right, now we have the two banks are connected. On some of my vehicles, you'll notice I actually go ahead and put a bunch of these like that, just because I do think that kind of looks cool. When you're looking at the top, it looks like one of those cool engine covers, but you don't need that. All you need is this. So this is now sharing the two banks. So the next step is to add our manifolds. Now you don't have to type it in, you could just leave yourself at the modular engine controller, but here we have our manifolds. In addition to the actual engine manifolds, we have air manifold, coolant manifold, exhaust manifold corner, and exhaust manifold straight, and fuel manifold. So air, fuel, coolant, exhaust, okay? Those are the exact same things the small engine had. So if you remember the small engine, the simple one, the pre-made one, it had those, all those things as little individual kind of inlets or connections that you could make. So with this engine here, you could make it a dual exhaust system. I've, I've compared the numbers. It doesn't really change it much when you do something like this. But in theory, you have this and then you'd put your exhaust here. If you want, you could also put your catalytic converter first and then your exhaust just like that okay so we've dealt with one of the items we need exhaust now air intake we could put that right up here now again this isn't the best way to optimize an engine but for the sake of this video we're just going ahead and making it like that so you have that. There are different types of air intakes. You do have a ram air and you have a scoop. It'll perform better at higher velocities. This one just looks different than this. It doesn't actually say anything else. But then back to our manifolds. So we put ourselves air, exhaust, we need fuel. Now fuel I always like to put here because presumably the fuel tank is somewhere behind it like that. This can also go just on the bottom and then you don't have to turn it. Then in that case, we just go straight like that. And like I said, coolant is last thing. Otherwise your engine will overheat. Now the nice thing about putting this here, right there, is that this connector you see has to be attached to a cylinder. And the way to attach it, you could actually have a cylinder down here. If you were to make a better optimized engine and then in that case your coolant manifold can actually attach directly to this just like that okay and don't forget you'd need in this case put that and that to connect your two sides see and then now you wouldn't even need this on the top you just have it like that except now we don't we no longer have a six cylinder engine we have a seven cylinder engine there's a random cylinder added on the bottom but remember we have our manifolds so you actually could take a T manifold and put it just like that and see what I'm saying about making it compact so now that we have another version of this same engine and now this coolant and this pump and this coolant actually we can't do that you see how this is actually putting right into there so the system didn't exactly work back up back up to where we were previously all right okay so that sometimes takes trial and error and there are better not better and worse ways to do it in this case let's just throw this thing here like that so to connect the fluid pump now to our coolant now it doesn't matter which way just like the radiator because realistically as long as the coolant's flowing out that's all we're interested in and now see in this case i would actually take this pump 
and press U to switch the sides around, just like that. And then that is where I would have a connecting point like that, a pipe. And then here you'd have your pipe like this, for example. And then on the front of that is where you could put your radiator. Now remember we talked about radiators in the other video. We have our regular one and then we also have our electric one. Let's go ahead and put the electric one because that is what was released with the modular engines. So there, it's attached now on the front. Okay. And there we have it. So that is, and let's put a fuel tank. We'll put a small one for now, but just like that. Okay. Okay, so we got our fuel tank. We got our exhaust. We got our catalytic converter attached to that. We actually ended up deleting the manifolds. Oh, they're in the front. Never mind. Manifolds are there. You could fill this out with more manifolds if you so choose. Doesn't mean it needs it. Okay. You got your air intake. And the air intake is where you'd put a supercharger. So this is where you'd actually put a pump. If you were looking at supercharging it. And as long as that's fluid in, not like that. So like this fluid in. So in this case, that's a supercharged engine. But we can go back to our air filter or this thing. And then here we have our manifolds, we've got our accessories on the front. This and the last thing that we need, because obviously you got to convert the power from this sh crankshaft into something that you could use. And that is the clutch. So right here, modular engine clutch, and it pretty much creates power out of the crankshaft block. Okay, done. Can you add more cylinders? Of course you can. You could put a cylinder down there, you could put a cylinder up here, and just like that, you've made it a V8. Now remember, if you were to do this, you just have to connect this, and you don't have to connect both sides, you could just do it like that. So that's a V8 engine now. But we're gonna stick with our V6. Now there is one more thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and actually put the air filter back just so it looks like an air filter. If we go to the modular engines, we have this temperature sensor, modular engine temperature sensor that you could attach to any block of the crankshaft like that. And it'll actually give you the temperature of the engine, but there is also a composite path coming out of the cylinders and value two is fuel volume value three is temperature so you could extract it from there and then in that case you do not need this but because i haven't had a video yet how to work composites we're gonna try to keep it basic so you have your thermometer there or temperature thermometer sensor but note that this also has a temperature sensor now, the temperature in the radiator is going to be different than the engine. The engine is going to be hotter than the radiator is itself. So be careful if you're extracting data from this. I made that mistake. And uh, yeah, you don't get the right number. Your engine could actually overheat fairly quickly. All right. So we have our engine. I'm just going to put this thing down to the ground so it doesn't collapse on us. And I will, for the sake of this video, put a little platform beneath it just like that okay and we'll add a bit of a platform here so we could actually put stuff on it as we make this work alrighty out of this is now RPS so what I was saying earlier about if you wanted to have a system where you don't have an accessory alternator you could put a generator path right here with your pipes so you could just have a T-pipe and you could branch it into your generator up top, whatever you want. But that's not what we're here to talk about. So with this now, you have a lot more nodes to connect, logic nodes, than you would if it was a regular engine or call it a standard pre-built engine. So it's different. It looks different because you have a bunch of clutches. Let's ignore the crankshaft for now. All the crankshaft is is a bunch of RPS, so that's not a big deal. But we now have our radiator with our temperature. 
radiator fan on off we have alternator clutch pressure we have the fluid pump clutch pressure we have our starter we have these rps's then here we have engine air manifold throttle and we have fuel manifold throttle so you actually have to make your own air fuel mixture and you have your temperature and then you have another clutch pressure back here so i won't lie there is tons of microcontrollers out there that you could use and what i use actually is a modified version of mr nj's um microcontroller for en modular engines and i just made my made it my own i adapted it to what i needed so this is my version of nj's modular engine ecu and the reason it's mine in the sense that i adapted it much to what i need for my vehicles and did a bunch of fine tuning and fixing it was a great starting platform but it wasn't exactly what i wanted so in my case let's just say i added brake lights directly to it i added a performance mode a low rev towing mode eco mode like i put things in here that were not there for the original engine but that's okay because um you can make this yourself or you can get your own or i will be uploading this eventually my own version of nj's controller that you could use in your vehicles until then you could extract it from one of mine if you want so this is pretty much the controller that i use and it works pretty well maybe it's not the best i know there's other controllers out there but for me this works perfectly okay for the purpose of this video we're going to continue on with the microcontroller that was built yesterday where it had if we open this up it has a very simple pulse capacitor start so make sure you go watch my other video if you need to know about how to make this work okay um, but this is the starting point for this video the only problem you could see here or one of the problems is our throttle out there's only one of them so how do you plug this into both if you plug this in to both of these your throttle out to both your throttle fuel and your throttle air it'll stall out it will not work so what you need to do is have an air fuel ratio we'll start by renaming this throttle air and we'll add one more and we'll call this one throttle fuel and extend the controller and update it so i haven't made any changes to the actual system just this so throttle up fuel goes to throttle fuel throttle air we'll put it on throttle air we need our throttle in the key and the start so start i'm going to put on the starter and we'll add a key right here we do need a battery and we need to connect the battery to the accessories and the key button key button to this test and a throttle in which we're just going to put a lever for this case you could put it to your seat the lever may not work because the system we're using here actually nope it's the numerical switch box so this will work it's not the system that i actually that i ended up changing which had the plus and minus uh counter so in this case the throttle is fine to go to this microcontroller to this uh, lever so that's fine now we have to actually deal with making the throttle and fuel separate but also one thing that you got to do and put is see this clutch pressure on the alternator and the fuel pump it's not going to cycle fuel and it's not going to produce electricity if you just leave it like this right now it's zero so what i've done in the past you can connect it to your rps like that and it's just going to open itself up as your engine gives gets rps so that's one option another option is obviously just a constant number 
if you want and you could assign that to here and you could put a constant number of one and that's just going to make it always active now the clutch back here is different and it's kind of like the clutch we talked about in the simple setup of engine where you put a clutch because the power does not go through unless you enable this clutch so the nice thing is the engine already has load because you already have your alternator your fluid pump so there's already some load in the front so really this could go directly to your wheels so we're going to go ahead and put a propeller back here just to visualize what it's going to do but before we do that we've got to jump back into this microcontroller so if you do any research on engines, an optimal ratio of fuel and air is 14.7 times the mass of air to the mass of fuel. So the way you can do this is by using a multiplier. And we're going to do it by initiating a couple of things here. And actually this will make it easier for you to set your air-fuel ratio with a property slider. On this one here, we'll set air fuel ratio. And what you need to, what you need to do is the throttle out can go directly to your fuel. And then what we're going to do is actually multiply we'll multiply this with your throttle fuel. We'll put it here in the multiply. Air fuel ratio will be multiplied by your throttle and go to throttle air. Now for this one, we'll put four here, max value of, of 4.5, sorry, value of two and 0.1. And let's give this a shot. The reason why we didn't put it to 14.1 directly is because if you're using PID controllers, PID controllers, you could do stuff like that. But just because we're pulling it th directly from the throttle lever, uh, You'll see here, if you like put your mouse over this, you have your air-fuel ratio is zero right now. Let's start this up and give a little bit of throttle. So there we go. And then if we turn this, we got the propeller spinning. So note that as you increase your throttle, you can release the clutch on your propeller. Now we're producing a lot of smoke here. And you still could stall out if you uh, do something weird like that. So this does need fine tuning, just like with the, the basic engine we talked about yesterday. This does need some fine tuning. It's not just going to work instantly, but you can find that sweet spot. Like this, where it's running at a low temp, low amount of uh, RPS. See, 13.7, exhaust 100, efficiency is good enough. Manifold's 38, so obviously these are all values that we're understanding just by hovering over this. But this would now be charging something very small, for example. And then if you turn off the throttle, so anyway, point is, we got our modular engine working, which is great. You found out all the aspects of putting it together, at least in a very simple sense. But that's a good starting point. And hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this inspires you to try your own modular engines. Don't be afraid to try microcontrollers that others have made if uh, you don't want to do all this programming stuff. Because even this one that we just made really fast doesn't work that great. It gets the job done. But I would definitely recommend something a little beefier if you're going to put it in a car. So feel free to check out all sorts of things that I've made, all sorts of things others have made. Um, give a like here on the below the video. Join my Discord server if you want to talk to the community and talk to me. And as always, happy Stormworksing, everyone.